Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, and welcome to another Battlefield 5 Weapon Guide. Today's video is going to be all about the Ross Mark III, running over its stats, history, specialisations, and all of that sort of stuff. It's a bolt action rifle for the recon class that you'll be able to unlock through Tides of War, or of course by using company coin. So at the very start of the 20th century, just before the First World War, the Canadians were pretty much dependent on Great Britain for sending over weaponry to arm their soldiers. But in 1901, a government request for 15,000 Lee-Enfield rifles was rejected, mainly because the Brits were focusing on developing their arsenal at the time and needed their existing rifles for their own army. The Canadians weren't exactly very pleased with this result, and it kind of rubbed them up the wrong way, though it did spark the idea of becoming a bit more self-sufficient and less reliant on foreign product and so this led to the Canadian government opting to manufacture its very own native rifle for its own military. The man to invent said rifle wouldn't be a fellow Canadian, but in fact a guy from across the pond in Scotland called Charles Ross, who also offered to finance the construction of a factory to build his newly designed rifle too. The weapon itself was a straight pull bolt action rifle inspired by the Austrian M1895, aka the Gewehr M95. It had a 5 shot capacity and it was chambered to fire the 303 British round, so the same one as the Lee Enfield. On paper it sounded like a decent gun, but in reality it was far from it, often being dubbed as one of the worst weapons to be deployed in the Great War. The first Ross rifles were given to the North West Mounted Police in 1905, and it's safe to say that these Mark I models were plagued with issues, to the point where it was recalled the next year to be improved. The Ross Rifle returned again years later in the form of the Mark II, which went through an embarrassingly large amount of changes during its development life, in an attempt to improve its functionality. Once again, this was then replaced by a newer, supposedly better iteration, the Ross Mark III, which was put into the hands of Canadian troops during World War I, many of which chucked away said weapon when they managed to get hold of a more reliable Lee Enfield, and even though the Canadian authorities threatened to discipline soldiers for doing this, the risk of using the Ross Rifle itself in a combat zone was often seen as a bigger punishment, one that could potentially put the user's life in jeopardy. The Canadian Minister of Militia and Defence, Sam Hughes, was a stubborn supporter of the Ross Rifle and practically chose to ignore its bad reputation and all of the problems surrounding it. Though due to the gun's crappy performance in battle, it was withdrawn from service in 1916 and Hughes basically got the sack. The Canadians were rearmed with Lee Enfields and the government took over the Ross Rifle Company in 1917, after paying Charles Ross $2 million. The Ross Mark III didn't die off completely though, being used by some forces in World War II, mainly Canadian coastal units and the British Home Guard. And despite its notoriously bad stature for field use, the Ross was often favoured for being a good hunting rifle, often having a high level of accuracy over longer distances, though perhaps not the best thing to rely on if your life depended on it. So it's time to talk about all the stats, going over the Ross Mark III's lethality first and foremost. Damage wise, the gun's going to inflict a maximum of 60 up to the range of 20 meters. This is then going to start to decline over distance, but only very, very gradually, with the Ross's minimum damage of 55 being reached at the range of 60 meters. So basically, there's only a difference of 5 damage between the gun's maximum and minimum values, meaning it's going to deal a fairly low but consistent amount of damage across the board. These are the exact same damage figures as the Lee Enfield No. 4, which isn't really a huge surprise with both weapons firing the same 303 British round. And so although you're not going to be dishing out tons of damage per shot, potentially making the rifle worse than the others for finishing off already weakened enemies, it'll still kill in at least two shots every time, just like the others, with headshots massively ramping that damage up and therefore taking your opponents out straight away with no time to argue. The Ross Mark III hasn't quite got the same level of stopping power as a few of the other heavy hitters like the Car 98 and the Gewehr M95, but just like the Lee Enfield, it does have the ability to fire fairly quickly, with a base fire rate of 64 RPM. This is sort of in the middle between the Gewehr M95 and the Lee Enfields, and just like both of those guns, you can slightly boost the rate of fire with the machine bolt spec, jumping it up to a new rate of 75 RPM. This makes it a tad faster than the Lee Enfield's base speed, but slower than its modified speed, though still nevertheless allows you to fire multiple follow-up shots pretty quickly to take down targets in two bullets faster than a lot of the other bolt action rifles for the recon class, generally allowing the gun to be a bit more aggressive than some of the more powerful, slower shooting ones, perhaps making it slightly more ideal over earlier distances, with it having faster kill times when going for body shots.
So just how accurate is the Ross Mark III? Well, it's no surprise really that the gun's got the same horizontal recoil values as the other bolt action rifles, with left and right figures of 0.1. It's also got the same vertical kick reading as the Lee Enfield and Krag Jorgensen, with an upward value of 2.5. And unlike the Ross Mark III in Battlefield 1, you're going to need to unscope to cycle the bolt in between shots, basically making those recoil figures less important if you're using some longer ranged optics. Some of the weapon's spread stats can be reduced by applying certain specialisations, so with the custom stock option, you'll be able to reduce the gun's spread while strafing around by quite a bit, potentially making it more accurate if you happen to move around a lot to get on target. Though by standing perfectly still, just like with the other bolt action rifles, you're not going to have any spread at all. So of course, not moving is going to give you the best results at all times. This might make you a bit more of a vulnerable target, as another sniper could quite easily pop a bullet in your head if you're not careful. But remaining stationary while aiming is generally going to give you the most precision, even if you happen to have that custom stock specialisation equipped too. Probably the biggest thing to talk about regarding bolt action accuracy is a weapon's muzzle velocity, and with the Ross Mark III's bullets flying through the air at the speed of 600 meters per second, this puts it on par with the Gewehr M95, and gives it slightly quicker shots than the Lee Enfield too, with its bullets travelling 20% faster to reach their destination sooner. This will probably make the Ross Rifle feel a bit easier to use over distance than the Lee Enfield, especially when you need to plant one of those bullets on a moving target further away. And although it's not exactly got the highest muzzle velocity in the game, it should still be ideal enough for most mid-ranged fights, where the Ross Mark III is generally going to be quite effective. Now, the Ross Mark III is another rifle with a 5 round ammo capacity, just like the Gewehr M95 and the Car 98 so a pretty standard amount overall. With the Lee Enfield holding twice as many cartridges, this probably means that the Ross Rifle isn't going to be quite as reliable within those shorter, more offensive ranges, as you're more likely to get caught out here if you get surrounded, or if a sneaky enemy catches you off guard when you're low on ammo. Unlike the Gewehr M95, which is pretty much restricted to clip reloads only, the Ross Rifle loads individual bullets and 5 round stripper clips, with the clip reloads being reserved for when you fire off all your shots. This is sort of the same for a lot of the other bolt action rifles in the game, but the Ross Mark III's reload times aren't really all that bad, with its tactical reloads actually being quite snappy, especially if you're only loading a couple of bullets at a time, basically just replacing the ones that you use in between gunfights. Tactical reloads roughly take between 2.6 to 4.4 seconds to slot in 1 to 4 cartridges, and a 5 round clip reload is going to take about 3.67 seconds, which is just a little bit slower than the Gewehr M95s. If you slap a long range scope on the Ross Rifle, this is going to block off the top of the gun's receiver, and basically prevent you from using clips, limiting you to bullet reloads only, thus lengthening empty reloads up to about 5 seconds to load in 5 individual rounds one by one. Bit of an inconvenience, but it's still not really the end of the world, so long as you stick to cover and stay out of enemy sightlines while you top that magazine back up. The Ross Mark III's already decent reload speeds can be sped up a tad quicker using the quick reload spec cutting them down by 15% and meaning that a tactical reload is only going to take between 2.2 to 3.7 seconds, and an empty clip reload taking about 3.1, or of course up to 4.25 seconds if you've chosen to equip a scope. The quick reload spec is probably going to seem more worthwhile if you've got a scope on there, though which generally going to make reloads seem really nippy regardless, helping to make up for the fact that the Ross holds less ammo than the Lee Enfield, yet is designed to be used in a similar sort of way over those medium distances. So taking a look at those specialisations now, the Ross Mark III has got the exact same choices as the Lee Enfield No. 4, mainly giving it a bunch of options to boost its speed, reliability and ease of use. Right at the top, we've got the quick aim and quick reload specs, and as you can see, I usually prefer to increase ADS speed as opposed to its reloads, main reason being is because the Ross Mark III's reloads aren't too bad as they are. Speeding them up does make them feel a bit more fluid, which can be pretty handy for getting back into the fight quicker especially with the gun only having a 5 shot capacity. But I find that the quick aim spec complements the gun's higher than average rate of fire better, allowing you to get back on target faster to deliver those follow up shots. This is also why I've chosen to run down the right side of the tree, picking options to speed up the weapon's deploy time and fire rate, as opposed to making you more manoeuvrable and accurate whilst aiming and moving. You're going to have the least amount of spread while standing still anyway, so that's basically the best thing to do if you want to ensure your bullets are going to land bang on target. 
The custom and light and stock specialisations do help to make the gun more usable if you tend to strafe around to get on target, though because of the fast firing, aggressive nature of the Ross rifle, I find that using the slings and swivels with the machine bolt spec is generally the better fit. These also go really well with the quick aim spec, giving the Ross rifle some rapid kill times, and the slings and swivels spec just generally makes everything flow a little bit smoother when you're switching around your sidearms and gadgets, something that could help you out especially if you get caught off guard in close quarters. As for the last two options, this is really all down to you and your own personal preferences, though I find the bayonet to be a better choice, giving you another way to take down a close range target if you get caught out in a vulnerable position. Plus, the extra movement speed granted by the charge can often help you out in non-combat situations, where you simply just need to get away from an area quicker, or when you need to avoid incoming shots and dash to cover. With variable zero in mainly being more beneficial for extremely long ranges, and with the Ross rifle not really being the best bolt action rifle to use of in these sort of gunfights, it's not really an option I'd choose over the bayonet, which is more likely to become useful in CQC. So anyway, in conclusion, the Ross Mark III is, in ways, a bit of a mishmash between the Lee-Enfield and the Gewehr M95, making it a pretty ideal mid-ranged weapon that can perform quite well when used aggressively. The Ross rifle doesn't dish out a hell of a lot of damage, and so this is going to lead to more hit markers and generally less kills, unless of course you're going for headshots, but the fact that the gun shoots quicker than a lot of the others does help to make up for this overall lower amount of power, allowing for faster two-hit kills on the body plus making it easy to account for missed shots, being able to get more bullets downrange in less time. The fire rate might not be as generous as the Lee Enfields, but it's still adequate enough to make the rifle effective over those medium distances, and the fact that the gun's also got a slightly faster muzzle velocity than the Lee Enfield will also probably help to make it a tad easy to use here too. With that said, the Ross rifle's muzzle velocity isn't quite high enough to rival some of the slower shooting guns like the Car 98. So although the Ross's bullet speed should seem fine enough for most mid-ranged engagements, it might seem a little bit harder to use for long-range sniping, especially if you're gunning down enemies in the distance that are scurrying around in unpredictable patterns. The fact that the Ross Mark III can only hold 5 bullets at a time isn't exactly the best thing in the world, and it's going to limit what you can actually do within those offensive ranges and how many enemies you're going to be able to take on with a fully loaded magazine. Though you shouldn't really have to worry about this too much, because the gun's reload times are generally pretty good especially if you only need to load a couple of fresh cartridges at a time. They're probably not going to seem quite as snappy or consistent as the Gewehr M95 reloads, a rifle that can actually use clips, even with a long range scope attached, but the Ross's reload shouldn't really cause too many issues, though I'd definitely advise topping the gun up in between firefights, just to help avoid any awkward situations. Overall, the Ross Mark III might not exactly be the perfect long distance sniping machine, and it can still be beaten regarding kill times by other recon weapons. But as a bit of a middle ground gun that can perform effectively over most ranges, the rifle does a good job when used in a forceful way, having a nice balance of speed, mobility and reliability, making it a pretty decent option to pick for aggressive playstyles. So that's just about it for another one folks, hope you enjoyed the guide and maybe learned a thing or two. Give me a like to show your support and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated with loads of new content coming out in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.